I think everybody watching needs, especially parents, dads, needs to read this book. Thank you. This book. It's called The Canceling of the American Mind. It, you lay this thing out. You lay out what's going on, not just on college campuses, but in the aftermath, as you said earlier in our conversation, Gen Z is now out into the world. Yep. But it's not just Gen Z, it's medical schools. It's oh, that's clinical psychology. Clinical psychology it's chapter. It's publishing. That scared me. The publishing chapter scared me tremendously. <laughs> it's, the, no, it's a, it's a the, horror show. Every, the, every chapter, it's like, oh no, oh God, oh. So now all the, all the new doctors are gonna be whack jobs. T oh, I can't go to a therapist because they're gonna they're but, gonna say I, I I have white privilege. Like everywhere but isn't I turn. Is it also it's... a d delightful and pulse pounding read? <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. You know, if you like horror movies, <laughs> it's I do. fantastic. I do like horror. But movies. but the original Night of the Living Dead is a classic. Let's imagine mm -hmm. somebody has managed to get to this point in the conversation, yep. and they're like, "This sounds like a lot of cherry picked moments," and you've like bounced around and you got some crazy philosophers. And you, only got, and you only got 22 years of experience doing this. <laughs> yeah, and you're the you leading know, expert in the country so, on this stuff, but what you do know, you know? Make the, you know, let's pretend we're on, you know, uh, on MSNBC and you have and you have your three minutes to, to answer the question, is this really happening at a large scale? What is the answer to that? Well, I mean, I'd open with it. One in six professors saying they've been investigated is unheard of. Like, it's just completely off, off, off or, or threatened with investigation for their academic freedom. And that includes your speech, uh, your teaching, your research, etc. cetera. Um, one in six. One third of professors, or maybe I think about 30% 30, 30 said that they've been told not to, inv not to do controversial research. <laughs> You know, like, so, like, it's, it's happening on a huge scale. But when, when we talk about the, uh, when I talk about 9-11, 9-11 was one of the worst periods for academic freedom over the last several decades. There was a real threat because people were freaking yeah. out, yeah. Uh, understandably. And also people on campus were saying some pretty lousy <clears throat> things. Um, so it's one of those situations where it's like, of course, the First Amendment lawyer, you know, is going to have a lot of work during that time. So there were 17 professors targeted. Um, for post 9 11, you know, insensitive speech and, and like uh, Iraq war speech. I imagine it's stuff like this is the US's fault, this is blowback, yeah. this is we're, we're the great terrorist of the world. A couple cases though, it's like Mike Adams, you know, who actually challenged a student who said America had it coming. So there were actually conservatives getting in trouble too, but, but once again, if you're getting in trouble, if, if it's coming from you from the right, it comes from off campus. If you're getting in trouble from the left, it comes from on campus. Why? Because that's there aren't conservatives in any meaningful number on on most campuses. So of course, like if there's if there's right pressure, that you know that, that's where uh, that's where it comes from. So three professors professors were fired during this period. Um, that's considered to be really bad. I mean, the American Association of University uh, Professors did an entire issue on a single professor being fired, Stephen Salita. It, it was a case that we cared about as well. Um, also insensitive speech, but still completely protected. But all three of those firings were justified. One, academic misconduct, Ward Churchill. Two, uh, about actual ties to terrorism, not his speech, Samuel Arian. And the other one for devoting a class on technical writing to her opinions on the Iraq war at length is something that's like, well, actually, you have to teach the class, was basically the argument. I know. So, like, all three of them were justified in other ways. We're now talking about over a thousand attempts to get professors fired, documented. Two thirds of them are, uh, are punished in some way. I, maybe by the end of the year, will be over 200 actual firings, over 40 professors who are tenured being fired. Then, of course, people are will make the argument, uh, well, there's there, there's 4,000 schools. And like, the, the Michael Hobbs loves to make this argument. It's like, no, about uh, half of the students in the country that go to four-year colleges attend about 200 schools, and about 80% attend only about 600 schools. Oh, I didn't realize that. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's no. really interesting. So, it, so that 4,000 schools, so what does that mean then? It's just like there's a bunch of empty buildings out there in the well, country? Well, it just means a lot of times there are tiny niche schools. You know? Yeah, so there's a school with 100 kids, yeah. but then, you're, then, then there's 40,000 undergrads at Texas A&M. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Okay. And what people need to get is that this is wildly and disproportionately focused in the most influential schools in the country. Yeah, there's a part in the book that where you basically say, if you're in the top ranking of the US News and World Reports, you're at the bottom you're of worse. the fire rankings. Yeah, yeah. If and, you're and Yale, Harvard, Stanford, Columbia, NYU, you, all, these are all- These all do terrible. These are all basically fifth columns. I mean, the four schools that hit the bottom of our campus free speech ranking, where it's the largest survey of students um, ever conducted, uh, asking them about their attitudes about free speech, or whether or not they think violence in response to speech is swell, surprisingly 
high number of students at some schools actually do, um, and the largest database of student cancellations ever assembled, professor cancellations ever assembled, campus speech codes, and deplatforming. Like it's 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 unparalleled in, ter in, in terms of how thorough it is. And the bottom three schools, Harvard, got actually got a negative score. Um, we rounded it up to zero. It was a standard deviation <laughs> below the next the worst. Oh um, University of Pennsylvania um, was next. Georgetown, man, did Georgetown earn it? And interestingly, number four was actually University of South Carolina. So it, it, like that, and that kind of like shows like what happens when you just follow the data. I want to be fair to two schools though: University of Virginia finished on the top ten, and University of Chicago uh, was was thirteenth um, out out of two hundred forty-eight. Yeah. So so th those schools, even though University of Chicago, we we believe screwed up something with with an individual student case, basically. The problem is, if I were really ex explaining this, you know, to an MSNBC audience, I, I feel like there's there. It, it's like there's this like perfect rhetorical fortress around uh, around the argument that there would be all sorts of ways to be like, oh, that's not. And I'm like, you know, you need to get it. The law was only established on campus between 1957 and 1973. We are talking about probably by orders of magnitude, like the largest culling of professors in the last 50 years. Like this is not normal. If, if you think there needs to be millions of people who, who actually get fi uh, fired, there's no parallel to that in history. I, I point out that the, yeah. first, the first Red Scare involved something like Three three thousand to four thousand arrests um, for you know presumed sort of communistic uh, uh, ties. You know, right in the aftermath of the Bolshevik Revolution. Basically. Right there, uh, there was reason to be freaked out, and there was actually a bombing campaign that, 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 all, all over the country. There was you know there was reason to be freaked out, um, and. Uh, Compare that to what's going on in in, in England, in, in in Britain. The that that was like the numbers for like I think the, the single year of twenty sixteen was around four thousand arrests for offensive comments online. Like so, yeah. so so like the they, UK, the UK and Canada and the Anglosphere is like yeah. a cesspool when it comes to free speech. Yeah. So so like and and people look at that and they're like, oh, we should be doing that in the U.S. We should be putting people in jail for saying insensitive things on. Yeah. Um, or dancing on their graves after they kill themselves. <laughs> oh well, that does happen in in newspapers. Yeah, like by so-called journalists, right? That's yeah. you. You highlight that in one of your in one of the stories in the book. Yeah, that well, that was a guy Mike Allen, so I mentioned earlier. He was a conservative that I was defending since my first like first couple of weeks at Fire. I was defending Mike, and he was the rarest thing of all in higher ed. He wasn't a libertarian conservative. He was a full-on evangelical Christian. And how did he get in? He he was a liberal, and then he converted. He 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 was a criminology professor, and he just you know had a revelation and and, and became a, a Christian. And he attributed to me um, the fact that I recommended Lenny Bruce how to talk dirty and influence people to him, which I was reading at the time. Yeah. Um, <laughs> that he is why he actually said this on radio once, like, oh yeah, Greg Lukianoff, he's the guy who inspired me to be more in your face with my with my conservative advocacy. And I'm like, oh god, I, oh, no. I, I, I've I've created a monster. But his whole style was to be kind of a little bit of a conservative <laughs> jerk. Um, a but, firebrand. But at the same time, clearly very <laughs> jokey. And that's something that at least America used to get, the gadfly function, the gesture function. Um, when you produced a movie about this, Can We Take a Joke? Yeah, Can We Take a Joke? Uh, 2015, I, I, I highly recommend it. It was only too far ahead of its time. Like, people, like, cancel culture was on people's radar yeah. yet, and we were calling it out back then. But the likes of, Je of uh, you know, Jerry Seinfeld knew, because they would go on campus and... Yeah. It was like, these are the most humorless young people I've ever encountered. Yeah. <laughs> so... So in 2020, Mike, um, during a time where we've never seen the number of cases we saw after the murder of George Floyd, right. um, it was... And if there was Trump was one supercharger, 2020's toxic combination of COVID and then George Flo Floyd's murder. Yeah. And, I, and it was deemed a murder, and I, would, I call it a murder. Yeah. Uh, that was like... Oh, we got well, we got gasoline on this fire. Can we just and, drop and, a neutron and, and, bomb on it? And, and here's the thing. I, I mean, I worked at the ACLU in 99. I'm a civil libertarian. So when I saw that, I'm like, this is an opportunity to actually fix some things that will prevent this kind of abuse from happening again. And, and there's like five or six reforms that could really help. Um, we should... We, Qualified we, immunity, we, all kinds of stuff. Yeah, we, we should get together, pass it, you know. 
But on campus, it was, I got some old scores against professors and students I don't like. I'm going to reveal things that they wrote 10 years ago, you know, or when they were 14 in a couple of cases, uh, get their admissions to the schools of their dreams revoked, or find tweets on professors I don't like to get them canceled. And, and that, was, that was the busiest fires ever been in our entire existence. We got as many cases in June of 2020 as we used to get sometimes like an entire year. Certainly in June and July, we, we got more than we would get in, 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 a, in a year. And one of them was Mike Adams, you know, checking in because uh, he, he had actually been targeted because he had a post. He, he tweeted out a picture of him in a different, not North Carolina, a place with no lockdowns with a bunch of uh, his friends saying um, uh, g governor, whatever the name of the governor of, of North Carolina was, uh, Massa governor, let my people go. So a reference to slavery, um, mm -hmm. you know, uh, uh, and arguably some degree offensive. And but also living under totalitarian rule in which you're told to stay in your home. It's not saying that's good. It's, it, <laughs> it, 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 it's, it's saying that this is yeah. this is not this is not good. It's, right. it's, it was making an argument for freedom. And so I mean, all global governments treated the entire population like slaves well, during COVID. Well, there was a horrible big movement against him on campus, uh, but it was worse than actually um, most of the other ones that I saw. Or although actually maybe more of this happened than I. We were so overwhelmed we had to like move people off other things to handle like the wave of cases and I didn't check in with Mike because I knew I thought Mike was like the most self-confident person I ever met in my life you know thick skin Lenny Bruce type of guy yeah. ready for action and then when I heard he'd actually accepted a severance agreement I was like oh, you know, okay Mike will be fine I knew he was actually talking maybe a little bit about retiring at some point anyway and only in academia do you think about retiring in your fifties. Well, I, 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 just from being a professor, though, he was he was, okay. he was getting worn down for being like the token the conservative. Fair enough. Oh yeah. And I checked in with him in mid July about how he was doing, and he wasn't doing well. Um, people were still coming to his house. They were calling him on the phone. You know, like he was being stalked. And then he killed himself the next week, you know? And, and what we were referring to was the fact that there were people, you know, writing about this who were absolutely ghoulish about this man who's dead, you know, who, uh, because they didn't like his tweets. But remember, the, these people are on the side of freedom, light, and compassion. If you like that clip, we've got a lot more where that came from. Be sure to check out our full conversations by subscribing to the channel so you won't miss our new videos as they come out each week.